Hi, this is Derek from MarathonJourney.com and we're out here to do a measured accuracy test of the Magellan Switch Up Fitness GPS versus the accuracy of the Garmin Forerunner 210. We're going to do this as a head-to-head -head test in real-world conditions walking using a calibrated electronic roller tape to find the actual distance that we travel. What we're going to do is we're going to go for a quarter of a mile, that's 1,320 feet, with my hand firmly attached to the roller tape that has both devices on them, so there's no, there'll be no arm swing involved. We're going to check the accuracy of that going out, and then we're going to come back and I'm going to switch and I'm going to uh, push the roller tape with my left hand and let my right arm swing and see if there's a difference between accuracy with an arm swing and accuracy without an arm swing. There's been a lot of anecdotal evidence when we look at tracks to show, uh, or that tend to show that the Magellan uh, tends to bounce around a little bit, uh, but we really don't know which device is more accurate. So we're going to put this to the test now in a quarter mile walk test. We'll let you know what the results are. We finished our first pass, 1,320 feet, uh, exactly on the roller tape. And when we take a look at the two devices, the uh, Garmin says we have gone 0.25 miles, which is a quarter of a mile. The Magellan says we have gone 0.27 miles. So quite a bit of uh, inaccuracy so far. We're going to take that test back the other direction, this time with an arm swing and we'll see if there's any difference there. We're going to save these tracks and reset them, and then we're going to take a look on the computer and see what those tracks uh, show as far as where those inaccuracies come from. So let's do the other test. In our second test, both of the units suffered uh, a little bit more from uh, inaccuracy because of the arm swing. And when we got to exactly 1,320 feet, the Garmin says we are at 0.24 miles, but uh, of course, since this is only uh, doing it in hundreds, it might be ready to turn over to 0.25. I don't know. We won't know until we download that track. The uh, Magellan, on the other hand, says we have traveled 0.28 miles, even a greater inaccuracy than when the unit was held completely stable. Now, what I didn't mention is the reason that we're at this location. We're up on the levee of the Feather River, and uh, there's very little as far as uh, trees. The trees that are here are uh, kind of scrawny, and we have a full 360 degree look at the horizon. So if a GPS can't get satellite lock here, uh, it really doesn't deserve to call itself a GPS because uh, you can see the horizon 360 degrees around you. Uh, this is one of the higher spots. It's flat. It's fairly straight. The pavement is uh, in uh, very good condition, so it uh, makes it uh, very easy to get an extremely accurate measurement with the roller tape. So I'm very confident uh, in the measurement that we got, the distance that we traveled, and now let's go back uh, to the studio and download the tracks and take a look at the tracks and see what they say. We'll see you back in the studio for the comprehensive look at the tracks of the Magellan Switch Up and the Garmin Forerunner 210 walking test. Well, here we are back in the studio and we've gone over the tracks from both the Garmin Forerunner 210 and the Magellan Switch Up. And I have to say that uh, the results of the track uh, data from the Switch Up are uh, more than mildly disappointing. They do in fact uh, confirm what uh, the anecdotal evidence has shown with uh, the skew of uh, tracks compared to the Garmin that it does over report your distance. Uh, in walking test number one and uh, that was a quarter of a mile with no arm swing. 
the Garmin reported a distance of exactly a quarter mile, which is 1,320 feet. The Magellan reported a distance of 0.27 miles, which is roughly 105.6 feet over the distance that was traveled. In walking test number two, the uh, Garmin reported a distance of 0.24 miles, so it's slightly underreported. Uh, while the Magellan reported a distance of 0.28 miles or 158.4 feet over. If we average these, com or combine them together and come up with what an average would be for a, uh, a percentage of error, the uh, Garmin uh, had an error of uh, about 105 feet in a mile. That's uh, less than a, that's, you know, a little less than 2% error. Pretty darn close. Uh, the Magellan, on the other hand, had uh, a 528 foot error in a mile, 10%. Now, plus or minus 10%, um, if you're talking some devices, that may be acceptable, but in a device that's supposed to be used for fitness and one that is using the distance traveled to calculate all of the different values for pace and your estimated finish time and pace required to finish at a set time and all of uh, cal even calorie burn things like that um, are going to be grossly misrepresented uh, by the current version of the switch up because it is so generous in its mileage and it is very obvious that the reason that it's very generous in its mileage is that it can't keep a GPS track. Uh, we're using pretty much uh, best case scenario testing. Uh, that's walking speed and in the first test the unit held in a stable position with no arm swing and in the second test, walking speed with an arm swing that's probably a little less than what you would have uh, running at a fairly slow pace. So we see these differences in tracks that are that are absolutely disturbing and really uh, completely unacceptable from the standpoint of a device that comes from a company like Magellan that's been in the GPS business uh, for so long. Uh, Garmin and Magellan are two of the uh, big names in GPS's and it looks like uh, Garmin is doing uh, an excellent job even with the 4Runner 210. 4Runner 210 has been out for a little bit. It uh, really isn't a, a huge feature watch. It's uh, fairly basic and it just absolutely stomps on the switch up as far as accuracy goes. And like I said, without GPS accuracy, you cannot use any of the other functions of the watch. Put any other function in there you want, it doesn't matter. If you can't calculate the distance correctly, all of those other calculations are just going to be out the window. Can't calculate your pace properly, can't calculate calorie burn properly can't calculate pace to finish properly, uh, can't even do an estimated pace properly. So um, there's a lot of work that needs to go into the Magellan switch up before it is acceptable to use either as a training tool or to use uh, as uh, a pacing uh, device for uh, racing. Um, Obviously, if it's overestimating what your distance is, it's going to be overestimating what your speed is, and uh, that will uh, have a uh, profound effect on your pace in a race, and it will have a profound effect on your pace in training. So, as it stands right now, um, while I love the features of the switch up, it, it has great promise in what it uh, wants to deliver as far as all of the algorithms in the watch and the information that it can deliver to you and uh, the way that it's set up and you can do all the custom uh, features on the watch and set up to six different data fields to show 
uh, on the watch and it shows it very plainly um, it just is giving garbage data and uh, very typical in computers garbage in garbage out um, if you can't get the distance calculations done right the rest of it is just absolute garbage so Magellan um, you, you need to jump up and uh, either fix this or scrap it because um, right now it's a totally worthless watch uh, except for possibly the temperature sensor and I haven't uh, done any testing on that to see how accurate that temperature sensor is sitting that close to your wrist but other than that uh, right now in the uh, in the shipping version uh, that we have with the uh, firmware version that's in there now it's a solid I cannot recommend this watch if you need to have uh, a GPS uh, fitness uh, calculator right now uh, my recommendation is do not buy this watch if you like to be on the bleeding edge and you hope that they come up uh, with some new firmware that will make this thing actually work in the future um, hey uh, be my guest but uh, buyer beware the way it sits right now it just isn't working so we'll be doing some further testing on this uh, device and if any new firmware comes out we'll go back through the tests and uh, see how well they do about putting it together like I said I was really hopeful that this would be just a uh, fantastic product and uh, if they come out with anything that uh, changes my current thumbs down don't buy uh, we will put that out for you in the meantime this is Derek from MarathonJourney.com wishing you happy running and we'll see you somewhere out there on the road.